I'm having one fight with Monty Nefero, and I'm gonna put him in a cross face again, and he's gonna go down right now. Yeah. How can you keep reaching for for the booze? It's it's weird. As he drinks a beer. Um. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. Monty Nefaro only seen here out of Ron Konkuma, Long Island. So, guys out there, I just want to tell you that uh, I received a phone call from the son of Bobby Fulton. And Bobby Fulton is asking for a public apology from the Faro for last week's show. <clears throat> and then, by the way, this is a true story. And I really didn't feel comfortable. I didn't feel we needed to do a public apology. But after thinking about it, I thought, you know what? I'll allow the Pharaoh to make his decision. If he wants to make a public apology to the former fantastic Mr. Bobby Fulton. Okay. So let me outline what I'm supposed to apologize for. We are interviewing a guest like we do week after week. The guest starts to make a statement about how somebody did something to her, and I had the nerve to ask her the name. She supplied the name. She supplied the details. Bobby Fulton, I am not apologizing to you for one second. I asked her who the name was. You want to get mad at somebody? Get mad at the person who told the story. My job is to ask questions. Good answer. Chris Stevens says out there, I don't appreciate Bobby Fulton, Fulton's son, one bit. Well, from what I remember, if I can, and you you could kick me in the leg down on the table. No, there's no kicking tonight. Okay. What I remember was is, is that this alleged agent was representing a couple of years back Abdullah the Butcher. He left Abdullah the Butcher alone here in New York State. This is what happened. And Abdullah basically was turning to us looking for cab money. I don't appreciate that either. Did he apologize? Nope. Well, there you go. I don't think he apologized to Abby either. Sasha Banks seems to be getting her way and getting out of the WWE. Reports are coming that her lawyers are negotiating a release from her contract. Boy, I can't wait till she goes to AEW and the ratings don't move one bit. It's so funny. Everybody's like, Have this fun, is Sasha. the biggest mistake ever. Ever Are the WWE, she is the most popular. Listen, oh, I, ha, I love her. Ha. I love her, but that doesn't. You, you, when you're not with ha, the machine, ha. right? You're yeah, not with please. the machine. Stop. Just stop. Yeah, whatever. Go ahead. Ruin the rest of your career. Have a great time. Does Jeff Hardy drinking before a risk Whis whiskey is my best friend and worst enemy. Hmm. Jeff Hardy was throwing back whiskey while telling a crowd about his relationship with the beverage just hours before his DUI arrest on Sunday, according to a newly surfaced video. The 44-year-old wrestler was filmed while at a wrestling Awful. convention Sunday in Orlando Awful. where he took a sip of his drink and quoted the lyrics, Whiskey's my friend and my worst enemy. Mm. Hardy, whose brother fellow wrestler Ugh. Matt Hardy Drinking was in attendance, proceeded to raise his glass and take a drink before <sighs> sen ser ser serenading the crowd. Yeah. Thoughts. Uh, by the way, uh, the documents had his blood alcohol level three times the legal limit of .08, registering .294 <laughs> and .294. One. How many times can you be given another chance? Uh, that's what I think when I see this. I mean, uh, how many times has Vince helped Jeff in the past? And I, from what I heard, he was even telling Jeff before his release, you can either go to rehab, because this problem was starting to pop up when they released him, from what I understand. He's like, you either go to rehab or you're gone. And Jeff was like, no, 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 I'm fine. Well, then you're gone. And then he goes to Tony Khan, and guess what? 
At least Vince tried to get this thing fixed before he left, and now all of a sudden Tony Khan's like, "Yeah, well, I'll take you to rehab." You're not a good guy, Tony Khan. You're second to the you're second to the you know to the race. Vince tried to do something for him. I just can't believe that it happens over and over and over again. I don't I don't get why you. How can you keep reaching for for the booze? It's it's weird. As he drinks a beer. Um. <laughs> uh. <sighs> I'm going to have more. Here's guests. my problem. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's got problems. Aren't right? you thirsty? I am. You are? I think you should do something about that. You look parched. It, it gets very hot in this. Good to uh, see you, Jeff. Yeah. Spidey Lachaim. It's it, it. This one's for you. There you go. That's more like it. The problem I have here, Pharaoh. Yeah. Is there comes a point where you're too privileged. So... Understanding you have a drinking problem. Everybody's yeah. got a lot of problems. I get it. Mm -hmm. Probably in a lot of pain. Yeah. You sacrificed your body for Absolutely. the sport, which you got paid lots of money for. Yeah, you did. All right. Yeah, you did. Um, With great power comes great responsibility. Uh, you know what? You're right. Right? Right, and, Spidey? And here's the most responsible thing. Yeah. You got behind, again, behind a wheel of a car. Oh, I can't. I can't. And... I, I can't. Just I can't because you didn't kill someone this, eight, you know, again, think about this time. Yeah, they, he's he been caught numerous times. Did. How I many mean, times did he do it before? Oh, probably a billion. Probably a billion. He's a professional drinker, so I'm sure five out of six times he doesn't get caught. He's done so many great things in his career. He should be so proud of himself to drown in alcohol over and over again and to get fired or suspended over and over again. I'm at a loss for words when it comes to Jeff. I, I think Jeff is so talented. It doesn't, and Matt must be so frustrated too. I'm sure Matt has talked to him a thousand times about this. And I, I heard that somebody was criticizing Matt, and Matt was like, I can't be around him 24-7. So anybody who had the balls to start, well, Matt, you should have been there. Leave Matt the f*** out of this. Matt is, I'm sure, a loving brother who has done everything he can, but you can't be with him 24-7. You're a big boy, Jeff Hardy. Stop drinking we don't know what yep. happened in jeff hardy's yep. life that makes him do this yep right yep. no we do know from what angel told us what led to her to yeah. do this you know what's sad too and and when we were younger this happened when we were younger uh built during the clinton administration they shut down all the psychiatric centers america told the mentally ill or the ones who were suffering from addiction fix your own problem all right jeff hardy should be at king's park psych center right now where the professionals can watch over him for a year and get him better. Because I actually know people who got better from that system. Okay? We stopped caring. We have to bring back the psych centers because mental illness is very real. And it's very obvious that mental illness is killing Jeff Hardy. So let's try to do something to make a motion somehow to bring back institutions that try to help you when you have these problems. Otherwise, Jeff is a dead man. WWE boss Vince McMahon reportedly paid $3 million in hush money to cover up an affair. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon, the CEO of the WWE, is being investigated by the company's board for agreeing to pay a secret $3 million settlement to a former employee who allegedly had an affair with, and according to Wall Street Journal report, the separation agreement, which was reportedly made in January, prevents the former unnamed employee from discussing her relationship with Mr. McMahon or disparaging him, according to the journal. Mm -hmm. The investigation began in April and has unearthed other older non-disclosure agreements invol involving claims by former female WWE employees for misconduct by Mr. McMahon. Mm -hmm. The journal said other misconduct claims were reportedly found against John Laurinaitis, the company's head of talent relations. The WWE board has sent an email on March 30th that the alleged McMahon, who's 76, hired the employee at a salary of $100,000 but increased it to $200,000 after beginning a sexual relationship with her. Hmm. The email also alleges that McMahon gave the former employee who is 41 and has hired as a pa paralegal like a toy to Mr. Laurinaitis. Well, this is messed up. Uh, this kind of haunts me, and I, I, I don't want to say this, but, I mean, we do say what we think. I really am very nauseous at the thought that Vince McMahon could end like Joe Paterno. Not under the same circumstances, but under sexual misconduct circumstances. Um, 
very uncomfortable about it, but I will give the benefit of the doubt to the process. Let's see what happens here. Um, I don't know, Mike. What's your take? No one's a bigger fan of Vince McMahon than you are. I mean, this is messed okay, so up. I'm I, not happy I about wanna, it. I want to make, I'm not I wanna make uh, these about it. lines clear. Yeah. Vince McMahon had a consensual right. affair. That's very true. With this paralegal. From what we've been told, yes. Okay? Yes. Correct. Maybe Vince McMahon has had a million affairs. Obviously, by right. the records, maybe it is. Mm -hmm. Vince mm -hmm. McMahon is a billionaire. Right. Vince McMahon... Who knows? Maybe wanted to run for office one day. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon is also a family man, and right. whatever his weakness may be, he he maybe didn't want to embarrass his family. Right. So, as a fan and as a human being, you have to look at this in two different ways. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon had consensual sex with an adult. This is not rape. Okay. I got not you. sexual harassment. This is not sexual harassment. Right. This is not rape. Right. Was it illegal? Absolutely not. Right. Only, I, I will put a quote on this, it could be illegal if he used his publicly traded funds mm -hmm. to pay off said right. paralegal. Right. Then... Right. Mr. McMahon can find himself ousted right. as the CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment. Right. I don't know that to be the case. Right. So the question is, people, if you're upset because it was morally wrong, that's your right, right? You can look at him and say you're a dirtbag, you're morally corrupt, sure. whatever else. Mm -hmm. He did nothing illegal right. against the law, as, as, far as, 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 far, know, as far as we know. As far as we know. Mm-hmm. But it kind of is opening up the door of what was happening, right? Why did Stephanie leave the law organization like she did? Maybe she knew this happened. Maybe and she was embarrassed for her mother. Right, behind the scenes. Right. right. How possible. about this? It's possible. Do any of us know the relationship between Mr. McMahon and Linda McMahon? Right. For all you know, Linda McMahon may have some kind of health issues. Mm -hmm. Linda McMahon, may, maybe they don't have a relationship anymore at all. For all we and know, it's a business arrangement. they're just together as a business uh, it arrangement. It could very well be. I don't know, we, and I don't want to speculate. Thank you. I don't know. We don't know right. these questions. So, right. again, right. it's not for us to judge. Right. If but Ms. people will. But if Mr. They're all going to come to their conclusions. If Mr. McMahon... That's sexually fair. harassed and raped someone. Right. That's a different oh, story. Oh boy, is that a different story? I completely agree. I as, completely as far agree. as I'm handing off this girl as a, a toy to Mr. Laurinaitis. Picker power. Picker power. Yeah. What about the uh, great John Laurinaitis? You do that pretty good, by the way. Thank you. Um, you got to smoke. Obviously, five packs of this cigarettes woman. And sound like him. Obviously, this woman was a willing participant. Right. Obviously. Now, yeah. the question is, well, Mr. McMahon, why did you pay her off? Well, to shut up. Because maybe <laughs> he no longer wanted a relationship with her. Right. I'm guessing speculation. His genetic jackhammer was done. He was done. Right. And she wasn't happy about it. <laughs> right. And he said, you know what? I don't want any problems here. Right. I don't want problems with my family. I've right. got grandkids. Here's $3 million right. of my own money right but you'll have to fill his paperwork out right so now the question everybody's asking is he's got no chance nick khan's gonna get him out of there and he won't be see uh understand that the mcmahon family is owns over 51 percent of That's the right. board Mr. Going anywhere. Unless Mr. McMahon inappropriately used funds right. to pay off this lady, he's, nothing is going to happen. The so is it a rough time for the E? It'll be a rough time for the E when Vince McMahon passes away. Yeah, I agree. Because it'll be an end. And when all the anti-WWE people will look back, they'll say, this guy gave me 40 years of great entertainment mm -hmm. that got me through some of my toughest times. Mm -hmm. uh, remember something. He's always been a great American. I I've, have nothing but respect for Vince McMahon, and I am praying that he didn't do anything wrong. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. I sent Jimmy over the week at last weekend the most overrated singers, according to some kind of article. I lost my... And
Man, Jim Morrison was no. number one overrated singer. Was he? Yes, he was. I did not get to number one because, okay, folks, by the way, he sends me this list. Most overrated singers. Top 25 most overrated singers. 25, I looked. I can't remember the name, but I was like, okay, fine. I get to number 24. I'm not even two choices in, and Ozzy Osbourne is an overrated singer. F you. I am done looking at this list. The guy who sang War Pigs and did a bunch of stuff in the mid-70s that had the same range as the guy from Zeppelin. Yeah, that's right. Go back and listen to Sabotage from Black Sabbath. Same range. Get the F out of here. Overrated. He's Ozzy Osbourne. He's the Prince of oh, Darkness. Right. Top Some 10 black number in the history 10. of pro wrestling. Let's see if everybody agrees. Number, number 10. 10. Yeah. Roddy Piper, Bad News Brown, Oof. the lame feud remembered for the wrong reason. The feud between Oof. Roddy Piper, Bad News Brown never reached satisfying conclusion and became best remembered for the unfortunate body paint that Roddy Oof. Piper what? decided to put on that night. Yeah, Farrow? That, that's just really, really tasteless, obviously. You know, back in the day, it might have been shook off like, yeah, whatever. We've, we, we, we had a much hardcore humor back in those days. But, uh, yeah, there's really nothing funny about this. What the hell are you doing, Roddy? But on top of it, Vince was probably like, that's hilarious! So why would you, you know think, what I mean? So uh, well, why would you think it would right. be... Why did we rank that as a black eye for pro Well, wrestling? because as the years go by, it looks worse and worse and worse, is what it really comes down to. I mean, this was basically knocking him for the color of his skin. What the F are you doing? It's tasteless, okay? It's a tasteless. It's tasteless. It's unacceptable. Bad idea. And it Real was, bad it was, idea. And it was really stupid yeah, that yeah, the yeah. WWE All, even let that fly. Every person out there's blood is red. So this was well, very I would, tasteless. I would tell you... Very I, I was offended when it when he first came out there, and I was Were pretty you really. I was. I Good was offended. For you, man, you were ahead of the curve because thirty years later, that's completely unacceptable. So I give you props. Well, it's just like I you don't know, know. I was shocked. I was like, "What the f is he doing?" I think when it comes to, to wrestling, which can doing? definitely go over the line, I don't think that yeah. race or religion should ever yeah, be dragged into it. That, leave them right? out. That does not need to be dragged leave into it. Leave them out. All right, Absolutely. number nine. Mm -hmm. Our old friend, Jeff Hardy, makes a list. The charismatic Enigma fought the icon Sting in the main event of TNA, World Heavyweight Champion. So what happened in Jeff Hardy Sting's TNA road, uh, victory, victory road, road match? Oh, yeah. Sadly, Jeff Hardy entered the match completely intoxicated, yep. resulting in then TNA executive yep. Eric Bischoff coming Bischoff. down to the ring. Yeah, this was a huge black eye for so many different reasons. I mean, think about it. People, you know, most wrestling fans are not wealthy and have personal cash to dump away on pay-per-views or other things that they spend their money on involving That's a really good wrestling. point. I mean, you, you know, and I was one of these fans. You know, you paid good money to watch the TNA pay-per-view, and out comes one of the heroes. This is a legend, Jeff Hardy. He comes out completely demolished talk about not caring about the fans but even more importantly what if he had hurt sting because as we all know in pro wrestling how dangerous it really is if you are off on on a on a, a someone dropping somebody on their neck or head by a half an inch they are paralyzed so you have jeff hardy not giving a about the fans or their hard-earned money not giving a about his opponent only absorbed in his own poisons. And the real shame of it is, is just this week, those poisons continue. This was a huge black eye on the business. This was bad. And if I may throw this in, because I'm not sure if it's on the list later. If it is, forgive me. But when Vince Russo was writing in the WCW uh, Scott Hall alcoholism the, it, into gimmicks, that was another black eye to me. These people are sick. They're sick. You don't do that. So this was very much a black eye, and obviously, in the sad reality, Jeff has not learned. Wow. All right. Wow. And you know what? And he clearly had no respect for the fans, clearly no. showing that. No. Number eight, uh, Damian Kane makes an appearance on the Monty and the Faro show. <laughs> oh, my God. You want to talk torture? Hey, folks, you want to talk torture? Try You try being a f the viewer and having a guy refuse to leave 1995 for an hour i wanted to castrate <laughs> actually, myself actually castrate myself actually, without painkiller actually chris lee said that i'm sorry chris i agree right. <laughs> oh my god help me mate help me okay. number eight yeah sunny oh. tammy sitch caused a wreck that killed julian lacetta march 25th but was not until later that the 
toxic, uh, toxicology, toxicology wow, test confirmed word, the 49 year old <laughs> former pro wrestling personality had a blood alcohol level mm. more than three times three over times. the legal limit three times at the time of the accident police said yeah well unfortunately Sonny is very responsible in her irresponsibility for embarrassing pro wrestling and embarrassing every wrestling fan here's another one how many times can you be given another chance all right number seven ex-pro wrestler sentenced to more than 25 years in jail for sex crimes the former professional wrestler best known as buck rock and roll zumhoff was sentenced to 25 years more. in prison uh, Zumhoff, wow. 63, yeah. Uh, yeah. was... Uh, He's dying in jail. ...was uh, against uh, guilty on two first-degree and two third-degree counts of criminal sexual conduct against children. Yeah. Well, we already know. We, you guys can fill in the blanks, and if you want, write in your comments. What This guy is probably the biggest scumbag on the list. Yeah, number six, yeah, which we've bad. covered numerous times, WWE scandal that rocked... The tabloids in mm, 1992. 1992. Tom Cole took his own life mm. uh, over. He was in part of the Ring Boy scandal right. and accused employee Terry Garvin and ring announcer Mel Phillips mm -hmm. for sexual misconduct. Yeah, this was absolute garbage. I still believe to this day that uh, they did do some wrong to him. And I liked Lee Cole. I thought that Lee Cole was a good guest. He, you know, he was pretty passionate about it. I'm not happy about it. It still bothers me to this day. Every time, and I can't shake it. I'm sorry. Every time I see a photo of Terry Garvin, I want to barf. He looks like a creep, but that's me. Okay, this is just my opinion. I'm on not... the other hand, but on the other hand, Mel Phillips kind of looks normal, doesn't he? Mel Phillips, yeah, I, I guess you. I guess that's fair. I guess that's fair. But apparently, he was magic on the mic. It's not good. Wow. Yeah. Magic yeah. on the yeah. mic. Yeah. No, Mel Phillips is a scumbag. This was this was not good for anybody. Wasn't this the Donahue? Stuff oh, led to it. This? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, this was not good for pro wrestling. Number five. Hey, Owen Hart weird. death. What really happened and those there on May 23rd, 1999, the wrestling world mourned the loss of the King of Hearts, Owen Hart. People behind the scenes on this unthinkable day reflected on a tragedy, tragedy answering the all-important questions, what went wrong and why did Vince McMahon okay. let the show okay. go okay. on? Well, it's pretty obvious what went wrong. What had been done a bun a a dozens of times, someone screwed up with the equipment. It's very obvious what went wrong, okay? Someone didn't do their job and a man died, okay? They were held accountable and have paid. This doesn't make anything any better. Right. But they were held accountable and, they, and they, they've and they paid for, you know, financially or whatever. Not that that makes any difference. What really bothers me here is, is how people are like, how can you let the show go on? Look, it's been told a thousand times. Vince McMahon asked the roster in the back, from what I understand, do you want to go on? And they all decided to go on. The ones who didn't could have could have stood up and said, no, I don't want to. The bottom line is the card continued and no one held a gun to these employees. Now you want to get all carried away? Well, Vince would have fired them. Oh, stop it, okay? The card went on because they decided to carry on with the show because that's what Owen would have wanted. At least that's how they felt. I'm not sure why we have to turn this into a decades and decades of, oh, he let them go on and all this crap. You negative, nasty, whatever's, stop, okay? I really believe that that's what happened. And I don't think Vince was like, all right, everybody get out there because I said so. Number oh, four, yeah. the steroid trials. Mm -hmm. The United States versus Vince McMahon, court case in 1994, right. better known as the steroid trials. Right. right. Uh, in the 90s, the U.S. government attempted to take down Vince McMahon and the right. WWF amid a series of steroid right. scandals. Right. Well, for all you deniers out there who would never say that, you know, well, Vince is bad and blah, blah, blah. This was a witch hunt, okay? And let me explain why this was a witch hunt for anybody who has half an open mind. This is 1994. Do you know what was going on in baseball in 1994, Major League Baseball? The government is launching an investigation to stop Hulk Hogan in 1994, 95, 96, 97, 98. Major League Baseball let everybody put bicycle pumps in their arms. Okay? We all knew it. Did the government come and shut down Barry Bonds or Roger Clemens or any of your other appropriate heroes? No! They went after Vince McMahon. Give me a break. All right. Number three. Number three. The Montreal Screwjob. Yeah. Uh, we all know about the Montreal Screwjob. 1997, November 9th, the Survivor Series pay-per-view, where Vince McMahon... Uh, 
manipulated the match to take the belt from Bret Hart, the reigning WWF champion at the time. Hmm. You know what's funny? The more I think about this, is this a black eye on pro wrestling? Is it? Because because a promoter wanted to protect his title before a self-absorbed competitor decided to take it to the competition? I'm not so sure that this is a black eye. I think it matters what... I'm sure to all the Vince haters this is a black eye. That's what I'm saying. It matters what side of the fence you're on. That's true. That's true. But I'd be protecting my company. Listen, I always agreed with Vince. Yeah, I'd be protecting my company. Is oh, I'll just guy? give it up on the next night. I don't think so, dude. You you lose the title when I say you lose the title. What the hell? Well, it's clearly the, probably the mo- one of the most important events to have ever happen in it pro is. wrestling history, right? It is. It so is. I think on whatever side, if you're pro Bret Hart, it's a black guy. It's a if you're pro Vince, guy. it's not a black guy. Right, eye. right. Number right. two, the Bruiser Brody murder. Brody died in 1988 from stab, wo- stab wounds suffered backstage in a shower during a wrestling event in Puerto Rico. The killer was Jose Gonzalez, Better known as Invader One, a jury acquitted Gonzalez of murder, ruling that Gonzalez killed Brody in self-defense. Self-defense, my ass. This was an absolute travesty. This was a travesty, dude. Um, it bothers me to this day that uh, Gonzalez walks free. Brody is as dead as can be, and justice was never served. Carlos Colon, I am very positive in my gut. I can't prove it, but I'm very positive in my in my heart that that Carlos Colon was very aware of it, that it was all going to happen. And basically, they murdered a guy who was, uh, you know, a family. He had a family. Um, I will always consider this a huge black eye. It freaked me out when back in 88, I think it was the year, I think, when it happened. And it has always bothered me. This is sickening that justice never came for Bruiser Brody. Number one, this one's probably pretty easy, topping the charts. Yeah. Over a three-day period from June 22nd to yeah. June 24th, Chris Benoit, a 40-year-old Canadian professional wrestler nice employed by World Wrestling Entertainment and living in Georgia, murdered his wife Nancy and their seven-year-old son Daniel before taking the easy way out and hanging himself. You sick yeah, you know what's funny? When you first brought this subject to me about doing the 10 biggest black eyes in pro wrestling, I said, well, one through, uh, you know, 10 is Chris. What are we going to do after that? Because Chris deserves like 100 spots for what he did. It is so revolting, sickening, nauseating, and shocking on so many different levels. And on top of it, Chris Benoit, if you had asked me to pick one guy from the roster that would have done something like this, he probably would have been the last guy I picked. But then again, there's that old saying, watch out for the quiet ones, you know? Because Chris was very reserved, very quiet, seemed like the last guy in the world that would do something like this. But not only to just hammer home the grisliness, when you're killing your family and you leave Bibles next to them, Bibles, you've just made the fast track to Satan's pit. 